everybody, I'm your man, Dennis Pitzenberger, SEMA 2019. We are in the classic industry booth with my friend Craig Majorana. It's business as usual, making parts for people that want to restore and invigorate their cars with new parts. That's what we do. Uh, we hunt down the products that people are looking for, and those are the ones we attack first. You know, we went hard on the G bodies this year. We really wanted to make stuff that was the perishable parts, the stuff that deteriorates. We started with the taillights. That was the main thing. Uh, I went into the, the groups on uh, the forums and Facebook and asked these people what they wanted us to make. And top of the top of the list was the taillight. Well, beyond the taillights, take me through the entire gamut you have for those G-Body Regal buyers. Well, we're start, the, like I said, the taillights are something that we started. I eventually would like to get to the quarter windows and full interior plastics. It, you know, this is all stuff that the sun really just dries out and eats, eats alive. And in, it turns they turn to powder in your hands so we want to just kind of revamp all that stuff and, and really put the the regals back on the map as far as a a future muscle car take me through some of the other parts that are available in the catalog of new parts for the regal g bodies uh where you have tons of sheet metal um, as far as doors and, and and hoods um we're working on also doing the upholstery the upholstery is is very uh specific to a lot of the, the models so we want to make sure we get the colors right, get the shapes right, get the, the overall covers back to what the factory would have looked like. Take me through that process, because it's interesting, you know, there's a lot of places you can buy quote unquote reproduction or replacement items, but to get it right, there's a real process behind that. Take me a little bit through that. The initial process is we really, we, we try and start with three good samples of at least every product we plan on making. This way the vendor has one that they can reverse engineer and they also have one that they sit on as a reference and then we lock one in our own archives as a reference. So, you know, it, it, we're really trying to, to stick to the OE style restoration. When did it seem kind of odd that in the world of restoration and everyone has that quintessential first gen Camaro 57 Chevy, did you ever think you'd be making so many replacement parts for something built probably by the millions a G body? Oh, I had hoped because I'm, an, I'm a G-Body owner and it's, you know, you, there is support. The, these guys, there are clubs, they're, they're, it, they're very popular. So the need is there. I mean, and I remember as a kid seeing these cars. So I, I always had a feeling that these were going to be a future collectible. Now, as much as the Regal is a future collectible and is now, the other side of this conversation is square body Chevrolets. Now, as an owner of a square body Chevy, Again, they made millions of them, but very susceptible to sun dry, you know, just basically wear. I mean, my, my old Suburban's got so many worn out parts, I could probably spin, burn up my credit card with you guys. But talk about some of the great products you have for the square body guys. One of the things we really, over the past couple of years, we've been in trying to improve the amount of emblems. There are just so many variations of emblems. You have your 10s, your 20s, and 30s for almost every model. And then you've got models that are standalone, like K5s. So each year of those, the K5 emblem changes as well. So, and then you have die cast and plastic emblems. Obviously the die cast emblems last a little bit longer, but they fade. So we just wanted to bring everything back to what it was originally. What do you think some of the most popular parts are that people are getting for their square body Chevys? It's always gonna be emblems. And I would say anything that pretties it up, bumpers, grills, you know, stuff of that nature that really you can kind of tweak and, and twist the, the vehicle to be your real your own. Give me an idea why people need to shop from your catalog because I go back to that same premise as there's always that cheap imitation. What is separating classic industries and the parts that you give to your customers? We don't play the cheap imitation game. We start with we start with OE samples and we try and mimic the samples as best as we can. We we I mean we really are stringent about the colors the shapes and you know just the, sh the overall shadowing even in the emblems and we'll scrutinize the sample sometimes a little too far but we want it right for a lot of people who don't understand the relationship and how it works give me the overview of how the world of classic industry and oer work together well classic industries is the main distributor of oer parts um, you can go to oerparts.com and get them directly from them we are the main supplier you can go to classicindustries.com and get our catalogs. Our catalogs are more segregated. OER is everything direct from the manufacturer. Classic Industries, like I said, we are a distributor. Well, you've proven once again that between the two companies, you can supply parts for people that have that love for whether it's a G-body, square body, Chevrolet, or anything in between. If people want some information or to how to find those parts, where do we send them? 
Well, if you're a dealer, my suggestion is to go to OERparts.com. You have the ability to buy at a discounted rate through OER, or you, if you are just a standard customer, go to ClassicIndustries.com. We have six to ten different catalogs, and we're adding lines every year. So what you see here, this is just, we're, we're backlogging lines now, we're, and we're still moving forward with new lines. So, Well, you heard them, ClassicIndustries.com. This is SEMA 2019.